Welcome once again to what nobody told me after 65. Today, I want to talk to you about seniors and diabetes. 33%, 33% of adults who are 65 or older have diabetes. What you may not know is, and what you don't know, is I'm a diabetic. Um, actually, who isn't? It is alarming how many people uh, in the United States have become or developed diabetes. And type 2 diabetes is the most common. I'm a type 2 diabetic. I'm not insulin dependent yet. But they want us to lose weight. They want us to change our diet. They want us to stop smoking. They want you to stop drinking. They want you to stop breathing. They want you to stop living. Type 2 diabetes is very common, but it is not terminal. You don't have to die from diabetes. Ninety to ninety-five percent of people who have been diagnosed with diabetes are type two. The type of doctor who handles diabetes or diabetics is an endocrinologist. That's the doctor who treats diabetes. And so I got some information off of endocrinine.org um, and I'll put it in the comments section. Here's some early symptoms to let you know that you may be pre-diabetic or you may already be a diabetic. Feeling tired, an increased um, hunger or thirsty, Losing weight, frequent urination, and blurred vision. Now, these are not life-altering things. We might want to lose weight so we don't check it. But when you're losing a significant amount of weight, you want to check that. Feeling tired. Heck, we're old. <laughs> we get tired but unusually being tired. You want to check that. Increased hunger? Mm, I don't think that will give us cause for alarm, but that increased thirst, you might want to check that. On this website, it tells us what happens when we are diabetic. And I'm going to read it to you. Diabetes occurs when the pancreas, the pancreas, a gland that's behind the stomach, does not produce enough of the hormone insulin. Or the body cannot use insulin properly. Insulin helps carry sugar from the bloodstream into the cells. Pretty simple. Once inside the cells, sugar is converted into energy for immediate use or it's stored for future use. That energy fuels most of our bodily functions. So imagine if you're not getting enough of it, yes, you're tired. Yes, your body needs that energy for you to feel like getting up out of the bed. Feel like putting your clothes on. Feel like going to work. The body produces glucose from the foods you eat. Glucose is a type of sugar. The liver also releases sugar when you are not eating. The pancreas produces the hormone insulin, which allows glucose from the bloodstream to enter the body cells 
where it's used for energy. However, in type 2 diabetes, there's not enough insulin being produced or the body's not using it properly. This results in a buildup of glucose in the blood. People with diabetes are at risk of developing serious health problems, complications, serious. If your blood glucose levels stay too high for too long, complications could include blindness, kidney disease and failure, nerve damage, which results in nerve pain or injury to the feet most of the time or other extremities where you don't feel pain anymore. Heart attacks with or without symptoms and stroke. Now that's type two diabetes. Type one diabetes which is sometimes called insulin-dependent diabetes or juvenile diabetes, that can develop at any age, but most often it occurs in children and teens and young adults. In type 1 diabetes, a person's pancreas produces little or no insulin, so insulin treatment is needed for a lifetime. The cause of type 1 diabetes is not known. They don't know where it comes from. But in most cases, the body's immune system attacks and destroys the part of the pancreas that produces insulin. Simple enough. But because type 2 diabetes is the one that is so common, that's the one that I have. Um, that's the one I'm going to talk a little bit more about. Um, being older... You're over 45 and overweight. Say I'm overweight. Who can afford to buy new clothes, though? Lose weight. You got to get more clothes because the clothes you got are falling off. But being over 45 and overweight are the greatest risk factors for developing diabetes. Over 45 and overweight. Other factors that can increase your chances of developing um, high blood glucose levels is if you have a parent or a sibling, a parent or a uh, sister or brother with diabetes. If you are of African American, Latino, Hispanic, or American Indian family background, if that's your ethnicity, then you have a high chance of developing diabetes. If you've had gestational diabetes, where you had diabetes during pregnancy, this is for you women, or where you gave birth to a baby weighing more than nine pounds. Man, we used to just fall out. A little tiny lady and she come along, how much your baby weighed? Ten pounds? How much your baby weighed? Nine pounds? Woo! Some of us was having trouble with five and six pounds. But that's gestational diabetes. I don't think I knew that or I had heard that before. Having high blood pressure. That is the main cause, I believe, in our community as African Americans. Having low levels of good cholesterol. Um, let's see, in men, 45 uh, mg, whatever that is, um, I'm sorry, 35 uh, in men and 45 in women, or having high levels of triglycerides above 250 mgs, and being physically inactive, wow. That probably describes everybody. Um, most of us are inactive. It's too much to sit down and play games on your phone or watch television or get on the computer. And before you know it, you've 
been sitting for hours um, without any activity. We're no longer um, going out dancing or uh, going to the park with the kids because now they have their own children. Um, and perhaps the grandkids are not around where we can uh, get out and have activities with them. We've just slowed way, way down. And we need to get a grip on it. I am on my way. I hope not, but I'm trying hard not to have to uh, be insulin dependent. Changing your diet. Gee whiz, where are we going to eat? Cardboard? I hardly eat anything as it is. But it's what I'm eating. The pastas. The bread. The carbs. I've introduced fruits and vegetables. I've introduced blueberries. Cinnamon. More garlic. I've introduced that, but it's probably too little, too late. Um, I should have been thinking about this some time ago, and that's why I'm saying, even if this uh, broadcast is not in your age bracket, it's never too soon to start changing how we eat, how we have our lifestyle. If you are 45 years old and older, time to take a look at what you've been doing and perhaps make some changes, what they call life-changing changes. It's necessary. I hope that something here has been helpful. Certainly, you have to do your homework. Everybody is not, we're not cookie cutters. We're not all the same. Do your homework. If you have any of those symptoms or you've been struggling with any of those symptoms, see your medical provider, please. Life is short and we've got less time in front of us than we have behind us. So let's make the best of it. I appreciate you all. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for hitting that like button. And remember, you don't know what you don't know. Thanks for listening.